I-4550, the number seven guy in the world who's been, you know, in the UFC for eight or nine years now. So uh, not upset about it, man. Rob Font has a giant hole in his game where he doesn't defend shots well and he doesn't get up well. If I can win that way, I will 100 percent of the time. So tell me about this injury. Obviously, we didn't know about it until your post-fight interview, but the tricep you think you hurt in the first round. Uh, that's what the doctor's saying. Um, yeah, something happened to my elbow in the first round. I've been having, like, just elbow issues for, like, the last couple months, but uh, something happened. I was like, eh, that could be sketchy. And then round two, round three, it started to get a little worse, and I was like, eh, you know, I'm not going to play with this guy. I'm going to take him down every single time. That was the plan anyways, but uh, it really became the plan when this started, you know, nagging me, and it's, like, real radiating now. So I hope it's not too messed up because I want to, you know, get back in there soon. Now, the crowd wasn't too happy with your performance. You were kind of yeah. booing and shining the lights. Did that affect you at all? Did, was there any moment where you were like, you know what, maybe I should just leave? Give them a little something. No. Uh, I, I love the crowd. I, I want to put on a good show, of course. To me, that's beautiful martial arts. You 45, 50, the number seven guy in the world, like, that's beautiful martial arts, you know? I know that the people want to see blood. You know, they. You, uh, that's how it is. But uh, I've given them plenty of blood in the past. This is the, you know, the, the way that I had to win tonight. Well, I, I don't think that there's probably any of us fighters or anybody that's been in there that, that's, that's done that that would ever give you any grief about going in and 50 45 and a, a top 10 ranked guy do you think had this matchup been maybe not so short notice if you had more time or maybe the elbow wasn't bothering you the game plan would have been different or is this this is the game plan with rob font's hole in his game this is what you're going to do to him every single time uh it, it would have been some of the plan to be honest i gain a lot of confidence because i uh like battle test all of my strategies for weeks and weeks and weeks and make sure that they have no no holes no leaks in the cup um I didn't get to do that this camp. Like, Rob's a real good fighter. I didn't know what it was going to be like to fight him. His arms are super long, and his hands are built like sledgehammers, and I was not going to mess around with that. Uh, I didn't get to, like, battle test my strategy. So playing it safe, call it whatever you want, getting the win as safe as possible, if that's, you know, call it two a checks. negative thing. It's <laughs> I not call it two a, checks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. two checks here. <laughs> well, my philosophy was that you were getting ready for Umar. Yeah. And so you were ready for that ground game, and you spent a good, a good portion of your camp actually training for that. Did that have anything to do with it? Uh, a little bit. Um, I, I have a really wide variety of skills. Sure. Like, um, I can flip it like this, you know? Like, uh, the plan wasn't to shoot against Umar, but I've been pre working on my wrestling for years now at, like, a really high level with one of, like, my really close friends and really close coaches right now, Carrington Banks. And it's it's getting real good. So if I, I I have that in my back pocket now. To be honest, I'm one of the best strikers in the world, definitely in the division. But these guys are real good. Like there's no there's no doubt about that. If I can beat the strikers that are equal and have a chance at winning me, I'm gonna wrestle them. Now I can say this because you are in a sling now. But, I, but right before <laughs> I the fight, I, I, all right. So <laughs> leave that on one outside. But right before the fight, I said, man, he looked like Yosemite Sam with the little mustache. <laughs> but well, Aljamain Sterling said, you know, after the fight, he was kind of like, all right, so he's wrestling now. Congratulations. What do you have to say to Aljamain Sterling after that performance? Uh, how do you say it? Do you say it nice? Well, he, he was kind of nice. You know I mean? It wasn't right, like, I'll you know, he was nice. Good. Yeah, I'll take kind of nice. I like Aljamain. Uh, I don't want him to leave the division uh, without losing. I, I, wanna, I, I want that one back against Aljamain. I would love to fight O'Malley, too. I think that the fans would love that one. Um, and, yeah, I, I want to be the world champ. Uh, whether it's Sterling, O'Malley, whoever it is, I think that I deserve the next title shot. That's three big wins in a row against tough, tough guys. 45-50, the last guy. The guy before that, arguably 45-50, except for the split. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's how you do it, you know? Like, I, that's how you do it. Corey, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if you give a damn, but <laughs> what do you think happens in the O'Malley-Aljo uh, fight? Like, you like you're looking forward to fighting for the title. Who do you think that person is going to be? How do you think that fight goes? Because you're, you're such an intelligent guy, and, and you look at the sport in a much different way than a lot of fighters do. Aljamain is a super good competitor. I haven't watched O'Malley in high enough level fights, and he hasn't been super battle tested against the really, really best guys in the world, except for his last fight against Jan, which was razor close. So it's hard to, like, put any chips on O'Malley at this point, you know? Uh, he's taken on a big bite fighting against Sterling. You can't sleep on Sterling. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I got Sterling winning that one. I think he's going to grapple him up. I think he's real big for the division, and he's just a phenomenal grappler. And that's not, like, a good match for a guy like O'Malley. Right. Final question before we let you go. 
Aljo, O'Malley, Marab. If you had your preference, who would you rather face for the title? Sterling would be one. O'Malley and Marab would be tied for second. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.